Hi, I'm Heinbach. Good to have you back. In this video, I want to show you how I approach writing for film. In this case, a scene from a documentary called The Block, The Plot, The House and The Tree. The general background of the movie is urban development, because that is what the director, Solom, is concerned with. I came to score this movie like it happens often now. Someone discovered my music on YouTube, puts it in a movie during editing and then everybody likes it so it stays in. So they asked me if they could use the tracks that they picked and I was really happy about that. Because those were tracks that relied heavily on a South African instrument, the Ambira. And especially this one, which came from Johannesburg and is made by Dingis Vajo Yuma in 2015. I've been playing this a lot. And to hear that something I made on a traditional African instrument combined with electronics resonates back where that instrument comes from made me really happy. But one thing that I don't do, even though this is a no-budget production, I always think there should be some kind of appreciation there. So I tell directors always, I want a little gift. And Solon, the director, came over to Berlin and we had a few drinks and he brought me this beautiful kalimba that you might have seen in a few other videos of mine. Then he asked me if I wanted to score the intro because during the time they had added an animated sequence that opens up the documentary. And I said, yes, sure, I'll do that if you pay for drinks. And now finally I'm getting to that. And let's watch the scene and then we'll talk about it. Uh, my name is Nikki. I was born in Alex, 19th May, 1949. And I grew up in this property. It's my grandfather's property. Just after the end of the 1800s, when governmental regulation barred black people through a rigorous pass system from freely walking on the sidewalks of the streets serving its towns, Herbert Papenfuss buys Seiferfontein to farmland in 1905. His initial intention is to sell pieces of the land and set up a European suburb. In 1911, after very little demand of the land by white buyers, he resurveys the land and subdivides it into blocks and 2,308 plots of 44 meters by 25 meters. Using a relative, Stephanus Papenfus, as an agent, he begins to sell plots of land to Africans and coloreds under freehold title. The area sees houses being constructed as families from all over South Africa, looking for work in Johannesburg, move into the area. The Alexandra bus boycott of 1957 stretches from early January to mid-April as people walk to and from work because of increased bus fares. The area has no proper sewage, and each morning trucks collect the human waste from the bucket toilets. In 2006, the local government plants trees on Reverend Sam Boot. This is continued with the beautification of Alexandra in preparation for the 2010 Soccer World Cup. I want to protect this tree because I like this tree. Even us during the day when it's hot, we just go there and sit under the tree. Nice shade. Ownership of land and redevelopment of the neighborhood remains a pertinent challenge to government and residents. As you could hear, this is a very information-heavy introduction to the whole movie. And there's not much drama going on, it's more about the amount of information that needs to come across in a short time. So the music must be in service to that, which is of course the first question you have to ask yourself, or at least I ask myself when I see a scene, what does the music need to do? Here it's there to help the flow of information. And I maybe can emphasize some parts, 
and I can't get too emotional because it feels there are some very dramatic points and usually I would pounce on those, but this is a documentary movie and this is just the introduction. So I'll have to do something light, maybe, yeah, not too dramatic. The second function that is deeper, I feel is the whole tension between the European and the African world that creates this whole situation that we are now in. So that is something I feel need that needs to be addressed. And how I'm going to do that is I approach composition from an instrument point first. I think of the instruments that I want to see in that scene or in the composition that I'm going for, and then the music starts playing in my head. So for this scene, I want to emphasize the contrast between the two worlds. So it's pretty obvious, because it also comes in later in the movie, that the Embira has to play a part. So that's going to be the African world. And for the European world, which is represented by the man leaning melancholy on a fence, I gonna use my piano because that's almost as old as the story. It's from 1920s and it sounds like it has seen some. With that contrast and textures, I hope to root the music in what the story is. <laughs> That now just feels like too much, too much. So my idea is now to just put this on a tape loop, run it slow, and see what happens. So I've got this big, big old mic here. something more plain, something simpler. So let's try that again. I think I'm doing too much. Quarter speed everything. So I'm using an FFT filter by Michael Norris 
to add uh, harmonies up top. <laughs> So the pure ambira doesn't really fit. It feels kind of wrong and I like the spacious atmosphere that it has now. It might be completely wrong, but I don't think so. It has this in limbo feeling, which I kind of like. So I think I need to process the ambira through my Seat Lombarda stuff. <laughs> It's just a touch too busy for me right now, so what I'm gonna try is half speeding it on tape on the big machine in the back. So what I'm now doing is just rearranging all the soundscapes that I recorded and uh, I think it could be enough. Uh, my name is Nikki. I was born in Alex, 19th May 1949 and I grew up in this property. It's my grandfather's property. Just after the end of the 1800s, when governmental regulation barred black people through a rigorous pass system from freely walking on the sidewalks of the streets serving its towns, Herbert Papenfuss buys Seiferfontein to farmland in 1905. His initial intention is to sell pieces of the land and set up a European suburb. In 1911, after very little demand of the land by white buyers, he resurveys the land and subdivides it into blocks and 2,308 plots of 44 meters by 25 meters. Using a relative, Stephanus Papenfuss, as an agent, he begins to sell plots of land to Africans and coloreds under freehold title. The area sees houses being constructed as families from all over South Africa looking for work in Johannesburg move into the area. The Alexandra bus boycott of 1957 stretches from early January to mid-April as people walk to and from work because of increased bus fares. The area has no proper sewage, and each morning, trucks collect the human waste from the bucket toilets. In 2006, the local government plants trees on Reverend Sam Boot. This is continued with the beautification of Alexandra in preparation for the 2010 Soccer World Cup. Protect this tree because I like this tree. Even us in, during the day when it's hot, we just go there and sit under the tree. Nice shade. Ownership of land and redevelopment of the neighborhood remains a pertinent challenge to government and residents. Every film is unique, so it has to be approached differently. 
Here, there was a lot of information about history that had to come across. So there was little space for me to do anything mid-rangey. The Ambiras, if they were in the mid-range, they would just take too much attention away from what was said. So after I processed them by pitching them down, it started to sound better because the different elements were not fighting with each other. I tried to keep it as open and yeah, positive as possible, yet with a hint of melancholy, because that's what you get when you <laughs> hire me to make a score. I tried to create emphasis through muting and unmuting tracks, as well as one point where it changed the harmony. So I hope that creates a bit more tension. I did stick to my original idea of contrasting the embiras and kalimbas with the texture of the piano. And I think that gives it an extra sort of death and roots it in what is happening on screen. And in the whole narration, this time span we're talking about, which is over a hundred years, my use of tape and pitching down on the Seattle Lombardi Coco Quantos was not just textual matter. It also enabled me to do less because by default, I do things and I always try to find ways to slow myself down and then we ended up at a quarter speed for the piano and at half speed for the um, Ambira just unlocked something beautiful to me and it left more space for the narration because this is just the exposition of the whole documentary. You have to get all the information across all the background stuff and the music shouldn't be in the way of that. So Solem and the rest of the crew, I hope you all enjoy this and I'm looking forward to seeing the finished film hopefully soon. Heinbach, that is just perfect on the money. Thanks brother, more later. If you've scored a film, ad, theater, play, or basically work for another medium, I would love to hear how you approach it. As you could hear, for me, it's all about the instrumentation first, and then I start developing the melodies. Your approach might be different. So please write in the comments or in the subreddit. I put up the music from this clip on my Patreon, and if you liked what you hear, my album Gestures is now available on Apple Music, Spotify, and everywhere. There's a link in the description box. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.